Hi everyone, everyone. This is my 12,000 calorie challenge. If you're in prep, please proceed with caution. There's a lot of yummy, delicious foods in this video. Also, this video is not intended for anyone to follow. This is done as a scientific study, which you will see throughout this video. But do not follow it. I don't want you guys to get sick. Um, also, my body is just very different. It can handle a lot of food, a lot of calories because I've trained my metabolism throughout the years to be able to do that. If you do this challenge, just know that you're doing this at your own risk. I don't want to be responsible for any fat gain, for any weight gain, anything like that. Going into the challenge, I feel very confident. I know that I can eat. I know that I'm tiny, but that I can handle a lot of food. Another thing is I kept my water intake high. Some people choose to not drink a lot of water when they eat so they don't feel full. For me, drinking water helps process everything that I'm digesting or everything that I'm eating. I actually probably drank about two gallons of water, which is my usual daily intake anyway. I just drink a lot of water as is. If you guys choose to do this challenge, just know that you are going to be doing this at your own risk. The main thing that I want to honestly put out there is after the challenge, I did not cry. I also did not really feel sorry for myself. So I don't want you guys to associate guilt feelings with food. Food to me is just food. It's nothing more. It's nothing less. It's not something that I'm tied to emotionally. It's just food, and this was honestly done for scientific reasons. As far as the 12K challenge, I just took some supplements. Both are from Discount Nutrition. For the supplements use, I did use a digestive enzyme, and that's just to aid in the breaking down of food. I also use Glycomanager, which can be bought from Discount Nutrition, and that is just to help drive carbs into the muscle cells, you know, mainly for carb uptake. And I also use um, RALA, which is a powerful antioxidant, which also just helps with delivering nutrients, removes sugar from the bloodstream, and helps with nutrient delivery. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? Hey, like every you single one ducked below the table. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 Can we talk when you guys are sitting? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm standing. We're driving back right now. It was really bad. Yeah. Nice. I definitely felt warm as I was eating and also after I ate. And that is because of the thermic effect of food which is just pretty much an increase in our metabolic rate due to the cost of processing food for use and storage. Alright guys, so I just got the new Peanut butter, peanut butter delight croissant, croissant donut. Mmm, yeah. It's so good. I also got coffee. So how much fat did I gain after this experiment? Well, there's different factors that can affect or contribute to fat gain. One of them is being my BMR or my base metabolic rate, which is just to help determine my caloric needs at a base level. This is the calories I burned while resting or if I was not to do anything. To manually find out what your BMR is, here is the formula. 
So for example, I am 31 years old, I am 115 pounds, and I am 5'4", which brings my BMR to 1,319 calories per day. Another factor is our TDEE or our total daily energy expenditure. This is the total number of calories that we burn based on a number of factors such as age, height, weight, normal daily activity, and amount of daily exercise. Using the formula BMR times activity factor, we already know that my BMR is 1,319 calories. Multiply that by 1.725 gives us a TDEE of 2,275 calories per day. So we got them some, and then we went to the Oriental Market to get some stuff. Then we got yogurt, yogurtology, and I'm still hungry. So we're gonna go to Sushi Ninja for some sushi Korean food. The fourth factor that we need to consider is the amount of lean muscle tissue a person has. The more muscles you have, the more you will burn calories. People with lower amounts of muscle tissue may not burn as many calories at rest. Alright, so home from ramen. I am going to snack on some mangoes. I love bingos. And also, I'm gonna snack on some fresh cold coconut. Just gonna take the top off and then drink the drink the juice and then scrape the insides. Very fresh. Of course, there are other factors to consider, which I would list here. We also got some Chinese food that I uh, will probably more than likely split with my husband. So I'm only gonna track half of it. Some orange chicken, also some Singapore chow mai fun, some dumplings, and white rice. It's gone! Okay. It's gone. Uh -huh. No, it's off. <laughs> That's like less than, less than 60 seconds. <laughs> Also guys, please do not tie your self-worth to how ripped or shredded you are. 
our body will go through stages. Where, if, especially if, if you compete, you're going to be at a stage where you're very lean and, you know, you got veins coming out everywhere. And then you're going to go through your off-season where you will be softer and you won't be as shredded. And I don't want this video to project negative life. Like, I want you not tie your self-worth based on how ripped or shredded you are. 